good morning so uh, i've pasted the quiz link in the chat window i'll give you th two three minutes please complete the quiz then we'll start with the class meanwhile i'll complete my attendance Answer your attendance, Asta. Asta. Abina. Present, ma'am. Present, ma'am. Aishwarya. Present, ma'am. Yeah, Mast. Amrish. Anu. Present, ma'am. Arbaz. Arbaz. Arjun. Present, ma'am. Ashok. Ashok. Benita. Present, ma'am. Bargavi. Bargavi. Pavisha. Present, ma'am. Chaitra. Present, ma'am. Dev Malay. Present, ma'am. Diksha. Present, ma'am. Deepika. Deepika LG, Deepika MP. Yes, ma'am. Present, ma'am. Deepika MP. Murli, Murli, Murli Krishna. Present, ma'am. Gangubai. Present, ma'am. Gujia. Harshit. Present, ma'am. Junjar. Junjar. Present, ma'am. Kavya. Present, ma'am. Kavya. Lat Kishor. Kishor. Present, ma'am. Lata. Present, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Manisha. Present, ma'am. Anjunath. Yes, ma'am. Ayana. Nilanjan, Nilanjan, Ishant, Present, ma'am. Pavitra, Present, ma'am. Maithili, Present, ma'am. Priyanka, Present, ma'am. Pavan, Pavan, Akash, Present, ma'am. Rajeshwari, Present, ma'am. Rakesh, Rakesh, Ramya, present, ma'am. Rashmi, present, ma'am. Ravi, yes, ma'am. <coughs> Rizwan, present, ma'am. Vishal, present, ma'am. Savita, yes, ma'am. Shruti, present, ma'am. Sneha, yes, ma'am. Spurti, Present, ma'am. Srinidhi. Present, ma'am. Srinivas. Present, ma'am. Sunil. Present, ma'am. Vaishnavi. Present, ma'am. Vinny. Present, ma'am. Ma'am, BY04. Ambarish. Yes, ma'am. Anybody else? Ma'am, BY02. Abhinav. Yes, ma'am. Matt. 
Okay, ma'am. Anybody else? Arbaz? Bargavi? Okay. Uh, hope so. Everyone have done with your quiz. Quiz is in the chat window. You can please complete the quiz. I hope you would have completed. And now we start with uh, just uh, what we have done in the last class. Then go back uh, and continue. So in the last few classes, we have done with uh, relational algebra expression, and even you have written the internals also. Uh, what what did we see in the relational algebra is uh, first is unary operators, which we have seen. Uh, where was that? Yeah. So these are the relational algebra uh, operations. What we have. This is an overview of that. Uh, we have something called as a unary relational operator. Unary means what? U means what? Single. So when you are doing some operation on a single uh, table, then we call it as a unary relational operator. And that is what is called as a select. And project, select is uh, sigma, and project is pi, and rename is rho. So these are the uh, unary relational operator what we have. In the same way, relational algebra operations from set theory, union, intersection, and difference, and uh, Cartesian product. So this is what is called as a relational algebra operation from a set theory. Then binary relational operator, we have something called as the join and uh, division. And additional relational operations, it is outer uh, you joins, outer union, aggregation functions. And we have seen how the database of a, a particular uh, company is working. And even you people have drawn the same diagram in your uh, internal also. And we started with a uh, select operation. The select operation uh, denotes with a uh, symbol called as a sigma is used to select a subset of the tuples from a relational relation based on a relation condition. The selection condition acts as a filter, uh, keeps only those tuples that satisfy the uh, qualifying condition. Tuples satisfy the conditions are selected, whereas the other tuples are discarded, that is filtered out. For example, select the employee tuple whose department number is 4. And you can see this is what a uh, select uh, sigma and department equals to 4 in the employee. Select the employee tuple whose salary is greater than 30,000. So uh, from a table employee, I want uh, those employee names who has uh, their salary greater than 30,000. Now this what the select will be doing is select will be selecting all the uh, rows based on the condition. So that's what we have even seen this uh, example. That is what our relation R. And this is what the sigma A equal to B and D greater than 5. So this is a one relation. In this relation, we have to satisfy this condition. After satisfying this condition, this is what the resultant uh, table will be. So in the same way, next, uh, what are the properties of the relational uh, algebra? That is sigma. So in general, the select operation is denoted by this. Uh, select condition line R. R is what a table where uh, sigma is used to denote the select operator. The selection condition is a Boolean condition expression specified on the attribute of the relation R. Uh, tuples that makes the condition true are selected and uh, appears in the result of the operation. So the tuples, what we do here, you can see the select condition based on the select condition only. If this condition is satisfied, those uh, rows here we call with the relational operation as a tuples those will be selected and which conditions becomes false those will be uh, those tuples will not be taken that is what is a filtering we are doing with respect to a rows or tuples okay and we see some more properties on the select condition the select operation uh, this is what the symbol we are using as uh, uh, sigma and selection condition Selection condition says us which uh, rows we want to select. From which table, uh, we are specifying the table name here and we generally call it as a R. Produces a relation S. So after you execute this particular select operation, what will be, be the resultant? There will be some resultant thing and they, where it will be stored in the S. And whatever columns we have in this R will be same as S. So that is what the first condition first property says to us what the first property says to us whatever we have in the employee table let us take an example employee table and after you apply a select 
the resultant in the s will also be the same so that is what the select operation will be doing and one more one more property select is commutative commutative means what why either you do operation in any order it should not matter so that's what you take an example here we have a condition 1 condition 2 done on the table r so then how did we do what is the order so first condition 1 condition 2 or you can do first condition 2 then condition 1 on the r it will be the same so it will not change the resultant table so that is a second property it is called as a commutative and one more because of the commutative property a cascade or a sequence of select operation may be applied in any order so that's what here we have just seen only for two you can apply for any of the orders 1 2 3 so you may have any number of conditions and whichever order we may have either you do first condition 1 then 2 then 3 or you do 2 3 1 any order is okay so that's what is one more property says so then uh, either you can do a single uh, uh, select with a different conditions or you can use a and operator so you can see here condition 1 condition 2 condition 3 applied on r or you can other way you can do it as a you can combine all the condition and use only one time the select operator instead of using three three times the select you can use only one time but mix or combine all the conditions using an and operator so condition 1 should be there condition should 2 should be there condition 3 should be there apply all these on the relation r what is operator this is a select operator so that is what is a, a selection is been done the number of tuples in the result of a select is less than or equal to the number of tuples in the input relation r so now just take a, a state so what is a state says to us what is a database state so now you are what is your now we uh, before uh, fourth till fourth we were having only the table attendance now we have uh, internals done we can add your internal marks also to your existing tables so then what we have done we have updated the database of a student same way here also in a company database we have just added these many employees you can still add some more employees so in the same way even in a department table we have these three department but still we can add some more departments or we have something called as a works on these are the works on table so in the same way department location what are the locations we have and what is a project uh, what are the projects available or running projects in the project table in the same way dependent now i am an employee of bhima city college how many dependents i have uh, how many kids i have and what how many of them are dependent on me so that is what we have in the dependent table so next we move on to the project so what is this project operator doing select will select the rows suppose if i want only columns then we are using a project operator what the project operator is doing the project operation is denoted by what is the symbol used this is a symbol this is symbol is called as a pipe so this operation keeps certain columns or attributes from a relation and discards the other column so what this projection will be doing projection will be selecting the columns suppose if you have five columns in your table but out of five columns i don't want all five columns i want only two columns that is your usn and your name that can be done using a project operator so the project creates a vertical partition so that's what we are what we are doing out of five i want only us and i name i don't want your subject details then what we are doing we are doing a vertical partitioning so the list of specified column that is attribute is kept in each tuple the other tuple in each tuples are discarded that means what whatever is my interest i will take only those columns and rest of them i will no i don't want and the, those i don't want i will not take so that's what means here example to list let us take one small example with respect to employee table in employee table we just want only the three columns so you can see in this how many columns we have in employee table 
first name middle name last name social security number birth date address what is a male or a female salary super ssn number and d number these are the columns what we have in the employee table out of these i am not interested in all of this i just want only three employee name and their uh, salaries i want so that's what you can see here so in that case the last name first name and salary of the employee is taken that is what is a five okay so now uh, take one more example with respect to table you can see here in this there are three columns a b c out of three column my interest is only on two columns that is a column and c column and even in a and c column if there are any duplicates or any redundant values then we are removing them you can see here alpha 1 alpha 1 is two times then you can remove and replace it only one time so that is what is a projection operation is being done then let us see what are the properties with respect to project so the project operator what it is doing how it is been written so we know that this is a symbol used for project and the attribute list means what which columns we want either i want first name last name salary so like this you can list what column names you want from which table i want from employee table from which table that you are specifying here that's what here pi is a symbol used to represent the project operation attribute is desired list of attributes from the relation so that's what we have seen in the last so if there are some duplicates that will be automatically removed by this operator called as a project some more operators some more properties of the operator project so the project the number of tuples in the result of the projection is always less than or equal to number of tuples in the r means what whatever is there in the base table and from base table you are just extract extracting some of the columns that's what it says here it will be always same or equal to the base table so that is what is a first property and if the list of attribute includes a key of r then the number of tuples in the result of the project is equal to number of tuples in the r so that's what is a project operator the project is not commutative what do it mean so we told that select is a commutative commutative means what either you do in any way that will not matter but whereas in case of pi this will matter so order also matters to us we have to carefully follow the order with respect to project so if you are doing list 1 first then list 2 for r it should be in the same order you cannot reverse it as we have done in a select but whereas with respect to project it is not commutative the order also matter which order you are executing that's what here you can see well, let us just take an example with the operator select time project so what is the select is doing now i want a uh, department the employees who are working for department 4 department 5 and the salary is greater than 25 30000 from the employee table so that is what the a is so you can see in the salary table greater than 30000 and you can see in the department number it is also greater than and be belongs to fourth department 4 and department 5 and the last one uh, one more thing that is pi so in the pi also out of these many columns i do i am not interested in all this i am only i just want only last name first name and salary from the employee so that's what the second b uh, diagram represents that in the same way uh, uh, i just want uh, male or female and their salaries so that's what the this part is showing you so next we move on to the relational algebra expression we may want to apply several relational algebra operations one after the other either we can write the operation as a single relational algebra expression by nesting the operation or we can apply one operation at a time and create intermediate results in the relation so you can see here either you can create completely or combine both the operator that is select as well as pi with respect to a table employee either you can combine both and write in one single or you can break up so you can break up and give some name and with respect to that name you can get it back the result 
So that is what either you can write it in a single sequence, or you can break the sorry break them into two. Okay. So next is rename. So why do we require a rename? In some cases, we want to rename the attributes of a relation or a relation name or both. So then we use a symbol called as a row. So what is a symbol used for renaming? Renaming is a row. The renaming can be done for either for both the attributes or for the table, or you can do it only for the table, or you can do it only for the column. It's left to us. How do we want to rename? Either we want to rename column and a table, or we want to rename only table, or we want only to rename the column. It's left to us how we do it. So next is rename. So for convenience, we use. Uh, we also use a shorthand for renaming so that is what first name last name salary so you instead of writing so much uh, things we can just write f m l these are the short names to represent that uh, what is first name what is middle name what is last name of the employee what is social security number what is the birth date address what is whether male or a female salary in this you can write a complete table and rename it with a short names that is also possible with respect to the rename operator the same way you can see here applying the rename so using uh, intermediate either you can do it in a single single sequence of operators or you can use a combined when we have a union operator what the union operator will be doing it will be combining both the values from r as well as from the s so take an example and see the elements which are there in R and the elements which are there in S are combined and formed a R union S. So that's what here, what is R? R is alpha 1, alpha 2, beta 1. Then what is S? Alpha 2 and beta 3. So that's what here, alpha 1, alpha 2, beta 1, beta 3. So this is what is called as a R union S. So that is what a union operation is. So the same way with respect to table how do we do a union so you can see here first uh, take a uh, employees who are working in the department file and store them with a rename operator department five employees then the same way from department five employees i just want only one column that is ssn that store it in a resultant table so then in the resultant two table what we do is Pi, the su who is the head of the department, that is what a super super SSN and department five, and combine these two. Uh, then you, we are using a union operator that is resultant one, union resultant two, and store that back into the resultant. So that's what you, here you can see result one, result two, and store it in a result table. Then what what is the operator we have done? We have used a union. So then what is a set theory operator? So the set, there are so many operators which are there, that is union, intersection, set difference, all these are called as a set theory operators. So next we move on to the intersection. What is intersection? This is a symbol used in intersection. If both the tables have both common values, only those will be represented in the intersection. So take an example here, R is one table, S is another table. Let us check what are the common in R, what are common in S, that will be stored here, R intersection S, that is what, alpha and two. Then what is a set theory or a set difference? Set difference also called as a minus or except is denoted by this symbol. The result of R minus S is a relation that includes all tuples that are in R but not in S. So the attribute names in the result will be the same as the attribute names in the R. The two operand relations R and S must be a type compatible. So that is what is a set difference. So now let us just see how this is working. So this is R is one table, S is another table. So then what we do is whatever are present in R, only that will be there and which are not there in both in both the table that will be removed so you can see here alpha 2 is there in both so that we are not writing elements which are there in r only that we are writing here that is what is called as a r minus s so the same way here we can see this uh, 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 
in union, intersection, and difference with respect to two examples, that is student and the instructor. In the student and instructor, when you say union, this is what the union will be happening. So when you say intersection, this is what the intersection is happening. So when you say student minus instructor, this is what the D operator is happening. So in the same way, E operator, that is what instructor minus student, so that is what is a operator which is being done here, instructor minus student. So then what are the properties of union, intersection and difference? So uh, union, intersection, both are commutative. Commutative means in whichever order you do, that will not matter. So both union intersection can be treated as an array. So you can treat it as a n array. So then operations applicable to any number of relations are both associative operation. That is, so associativity is what? Whichever first you do with the two relation, then with another, or you do it in any order, that is OK. So that is what is a, a associativity says to us. Whereas minus, so minus is also one operator, but minus is not commutative. Means what either if I do R minus S will always not be equal to S minus R. So that is what is a, a minus operator or a difference operator will be doing. So then we have seen about a Cartesian product. What is a Cartesian product? The operation is used to combine tuples from two relations. So denote, denoted by R is one table, S is another table, and whatever values we have in R and whatever values we have in, B, in S will be combined or will be operated using a Cartesian operator. So in that case, what will be the resultant attributes when we apply a Cartesian product is N plus M attributes will be the resultant operator. So that's what you can see here. Q is what? A1, A2, etc., AN. B1, B2, B3, BM is that order. So that is what is a Q operator. So then you can just see here Cartesian product R and S. So then what is this Cartesian product? R is one table. S is another table. And when we take each column, each column, each row from one table and do with the other table like this we start doing do the operation and all the elements from all the values from first row has to be multiplied with the other then same way for the second one with second row and first row second row with the second row second row with the third row second row with the third row like this we do then that is what is called as a cartesian product in the same way, relational algebra operations from a set theory that is Cartesian product. Generally, this is a Cartesian product. And let us say whether it is a meaningful or will not have any meaning for that. Let us just take an example here. You can see here, Jennifer is an employee who is working in the, who, whose name is there in employee table. And uh, we want to know whether the Jennifer is ha having any dependence. Yes. But when we do a Cartesian product, you can see here, Jennifer, uh, is having so many dependents because uh, we do a, a, a mul uh, Cartesian product with the th two table. Then this this particular table, after you do a Cartesian product with the employee and dependents, there is no meaning in this. So bring bringing to this a proper meaning, what we have to do is we are saying that Jennifer is having only one dependent. That is what is a Abhinar. So next we move on to a join operator. So join is similar like our intersection. We are joining two tables, that is R and S, based on this condition. So you can see here, so based on the US, based on the social security number of both, we have joined. So you can see all the employees whose SSN and the manager SSN are matching only those tables we have taken, that is what is called as a join operator. So the same way, some properties with the join operator, considering the following join operation, that is R and S, and the resultant of the relation is something like this. This is Q, A1, A2, etc., AN, then B1, B2, B, etc., BN. So this is what is called as a join operator. So the same way, what is theta join? Theta join, the condition is called as a theta join, if suppose, if it is 
getting as a boolean expression then we are calling it as a theta joint so you can see here ai is less than bj and ak should be the values of that particular table with that particular row should be matching with this other table that is s and the attribute ba so like this when we do then we call it as a theta joint so then what is equi joint so we are comparing and checking out whether the two row two columns in two tables are same then we say it is a equi joint so then what is natural joint natural joint is this operator where we say that uh, it is similar like our intersection you can see here which are all common in this and which are all common in this those are being used here joined here then we call this as a natural joint and next we move on to a binary uh, relational operator joins how we do it so in this case we want a d number based on the d number we want to join two two tables that is department and department location and that's how we are doing department and department location and that will give us a department location similarly take one more example in this case we want to join r table and s table on what columns on c and d column which are present in r as well as uh, s even in the s table that is c and d are present then that is what is called as a natural joint combine these two and store this in a queue so that is what and operator will be doing so that is what the natural join will be doing you can see here project uh, department combine these two and store that in a, a project department similarly department and department location combine these two and store it in a department location so then what is a complete set of relational operator the set of operations including select project union difference rename and cartesian product x is called as a complete set because any other relational algebra expression can be expressed by a combination of these five operators using these five you we can do any sort of complex operations on this and what is division operator you can see here r is one table s is another table and we want to apply a division on these two r divide s we start comparing one and two with respect to this table and we finally uh, come to know that only alpha and beta is having one and two so that's the reason only alpha and two is been will be the resultant output of for a division operator the same example with this table you can see 192 is projects and who are working the employees who are working in project 1 and the employees who are working in project 2 those uh, social security numbers we want so then this is the resultant of that table these two table ssn divided by uh, phone numbers will get as a social security number of the employee who are working for project number 1 and project number 2 similarly so r divided by s will get it as a b1 and b2 so this is what is called as a division operator the summary of this so what is select operator and what is a purpose what is a notation we are using so that's what here the summary of all what we have studied all these operator and what is the purpose of that operator and how do we note, represent them so that is what here we have recapped it and just we move on to a additional uh, relational algebra operations in that we have something called as a generalized projection outer join and aggregate function so what is generalized projection we know what is projection projection means what Uh, filtering out the columns so when you are filtering out the columns if you even apply arithmetic functions then we call it as a generalized projection so that's what you can see here pi is a projection apply a function 1 function 2 etc function 1 and on the uh, table called as a e so next we move on to a aggregate functions and their operation suppose i want the average of the students who got the average in test 1 test 2 test 3 then we use a built in function called as average the same way i want to know what is the minimum uh, marks who got in the dms subject then we have a built in function called as a minimum in the same way 
uh, I want to know who got a maximum, then we call it as a maximum. Then we have something called as a sum. I want to know sum one, sum at sum of three columns. Then we use a built-in function called as a sum. Similarly, I want to count how many people have attended DBMS. When then we use a built-in function called as a count. So that is what is called as a aggregate function and aggregate operations in a relational algebra. That is g1, g2, etc. G and this is how we represent a aggregate functions. Let us take one small example for a sum operator. You can see I, we want to know what is the sum of the C column and represent the, that in the sum. So that's how the sum of C will be getting like this. 7 plus 7 plus 3 plus 10 will be 27. That is represented here. Similar fashion, you can see here a relation in this one. We want to know what is the minimum balance for one particular day in that particular branch. Uh, something like in our early, what is a balance for today so the same way here you can see perivage is being combined 400 plus 900 uh, the balance will be 1300 so in the same way bring term so what is the balance 750 plus 750 is 1500 that will use the bring term in the same way red root is only one then we represent that seven that is the seven value then what is the outer join so you can see here the example in this example we have two tables that is loan and a borrower in loan we have three columns loan 170 loan 230 and loan 260 and in borrower we have a loan 170 230 and 155 now we apply a outer join operations on these tables then first let us see what is inner join inner join is similar like our intersection all the values which are present in loan table as well as in borrower table that will be taken that is what is called as a inner join so whereas left outer join along with this intersection left over in the loan should be added so that's what here you can see 170 and 230 were the intersection and left over in the loan is been added with the l270 so that is what is a left outer join so then what is right outer join so you can see what is the intersection 170 and 230 and a borrower that is a L155 that is what is a, a right outer join. So then what is full uh, full outer join combining both that is loan and the borrower and both the columns 170, 230, 260, 155 this is what is called as a full outer join. And the last topic in the second unit is how do we map a relational database with a ER diagram and without losing any data, how do we represent the ER diagram to a table? So now we have this table. So you can see employee table, that is company table. In that we have an employee, a department, and project. These are the strong entities. Means I can write all these separately because employee is having a primary key. Department is also having a primary key project is also having a primary key then i can represent this separately to a tables and we have some more tables where they are weak means like dependent so in the dependent table we don't have primary key but still it is dependent on the employee until unless the employees exist you cannot have a dependent in the same way works on if employee is working for which department and employee is managing which uh, project and employees working for which project so that's what we see here that is what is a uh, alternative for er so then the relational database design using er to relational mapping first one is a step one map of regular entity type that's what i told there are three things first you map them that is what is a regular entity type next one we have something called as a mapping weak entity type so a dependence is a weak entity where it is not having a, a dependence until unless the employee is there the dependence cannot be there then map those things after mapping you just check out with whether there is a foreign key mapped between a uh, two tables then that is what is called as a foreign key approach and we can merge two tables so you can see in this works on or uh, works on number of hours we can merge merge the table that is what the merge relation and next is a cross reference or a relational approach we can combine this then that is what is called as a relational database 
uh, er2 relations and then we can map them and say that whether it is a one to one relation or one to n relation or m to n relation <coughs> and we if we have any multi value so multi value means many so i may have a car may have a black color white color red color so there are many uh, values for a car then if that particular attribute is exist then you have to map them with the attribute and the last one is map the n array relationship type so that is what the step 7 represents here so that's what you here you can see how did we map with respect to that first employee should be there because we have a, a, a primary key in this in the same way department also we have we will write like this department location is not having any primary keys but still we, we will be using the uh, um, foreign key a primary key from a department table and we are making it as a foreign key in this department location at the location the same way we are adding some more that is project it is having the primary key this is a strong entity whereas works on will not have any uh, primary key but still we are using a foreign keys referring from a employee table that is social security number project number from a works on table so in the same way dependent table so you can see what is the social security number what is the department name what is the whether he is a male or a female birth date and the relationship like this we map what is the year when we have a year diagram we have to map this year diagram to our respective tables without losing a bit of the information so that is what is a uh, this what is your unit 2 you need to complete today so by tomorrow that is from monday we'll start with a unit 3 so any any uh, uh, this thing any doubts you can ask me any doubts any doubts in the second unit any doubts in the second no ma'am okay so if you have not completed please complete uh, the quiz in the chat window i'll give you five more minutes so you can complete in the chat window 